Today we're jumping into the biggest lie of self-love. We've all heard about self-love, there's so many magazines and talks about it and people talking about these things on talk shows, on YouTube videos, but what does it actually mean? What is self-love? Shireen has nine secrets to self-love, which she's going to dive into. And we're going to share some stories, some real experiences, and learn some of these myths, some of these toxic ideas about self-love that actually stop us loving ourselves and what real self-love is. So welcome to the podcast. Hello, Shireen. Good morning. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Hello, Michael. I'm always very surprised when you put me on the spot. Well, but that's the whole point of the podcast, to put you on the spot and see what happens, isn't it? Right, right. So self-love, th this was your idea. Why did you want to talk about self-love in the first place? You know, it's that time of the year. And maybe by the time the podcast airs, it will be a different time of the year. But it's good to take stock. It's good to really think about these things. It's good to see where we are at with it. Because sometimes I feel we um, lack self-love and because we lack self-love, we don't care for the self and just, you know, like it spirals down, like one thing leads to another thing, leads to another thing, leads to another. So lack of self-love causes loads of problems, is that what you're saying? It, loads of problems, loads of problems. I used to, to the meditation center at one point, we used to have a lot of people who went to AA mm -hmm. and NA come to to our meditation um, classes. And they used to tell me, what, if you slip back, slip back into, um, you know, having that drink, right? It just takes one thing to go off in a day where you feel it just spirals down and then you want that drink. And it's the same with self-love. It's just one thing needs to go off track and then you just spiral down and into, you know, a funk. Very interesting. So we're going to be talking about some of these things to avoid and things to do. And right at the beginning, I just wanted to share a story about this and this this is this is one of the key things with self-love is what actually do we need to do to get self-love i had a client many years ago and she was living in canada i remember talking to her she was in, in up in somewhere in canada and she was doing all these sabotaging things to she wasn't eating right. She was getting up late and she wanted to get up early. And there's a long list of things that she needed to do, wanted to do. She said this herself, I want to do these things and I'm not doing these things and I don't like myself. And so one day she said to me, what is the, the one thing I can do to, to have self-love, to love myself, you know, because I don't like myself because my life's a mess and I'm ruining my life. And what she was looking for, I could tell from the question, what she wanted me to say was, here's this magic thing, this wonderful magic thing. And if you do this magic thing, then you'll have complete You know what you should have said? If you give me your, like $10,000 credit card or something, and then you'll have self-love. <laughs> I think that's what a lot of people do, right? But, but she was like, where is where is this magic thing? What is the magic thing, right? She wanted this like mantra or this one practice or whatever it was. That, that's what I could tell. And what I told her isn't what she wanted to hear. And I said, look, realistically, self-love is an emergent property of various other things. Like, for example, health is an emergent property of eating right, thinking right, exercising right having a good lifestyle like if you do all these things down here after a while what emerges out of it is health and money is an emergent property of various other things that we do over here and then money comes out the top and good relationships anything in life right spiritual connection there's certain things we do and it emerges out of the top she didn't want to hear that because she wanted just to get straight to the thing without doing any of the stuff underneath and i told her look realistically there are certain things that you're doing in your life right now which are harming your self-love and wrecking your life and you know they are because you tell me about them all the time 
And we need to look at those things and then the love will come out of that. Uh, but she didn't want to hear that. And so we're hopefully everyone listening to this is happy to hear this, right? Because if you've tried everything else and you've tried it, because all these magazines, here's this wonderful thing, love yourself. Like I have a bunch of chocolate here, right? I thought I'd just show you my big stack of chocolate, right? Last night I went into the store. I'm sure everyone's done this, right? Look at those chocolate bars. Oh my God, um, that's went, a lot. Yeah, I, I was just like, I don't do things in half measures, right? So I was in the store and I, and as I'm sure anyone has, has experienced themselves, I went on a walk and it was a lot longer than I met someone and that took a lot longer. So, and then I was hungry. So I went to the store. I, I planned on going to the store anyway. And I got there and I'm really hungry. Right? And, and I'm sure so you, you decided to buy market. 10 chocolate bars? I'm just wandering around. My blood sugar's crashing and I'm like, oh my God, I need to eat something. So I started in the vegetable section and I got all these wonderful things. And I should have probably just left and eaten an apple. But as I wandered and meandered around the store, that all the tasty nonsense starts, you know, revealing itself. So I came out there with a big stack of chocolate bars, <clears throat> and then I ate slightly too much last night because I was really hungry and low blood sugar. And um, so at the time, I, I that seemed like self love, right? L loving myself, taking care of myself. But actually, eating too much chocolate or eating too much food or whatever it is it actually can wreck our life. And if that goes on and on and on and on, it can get worse and worse and worse. So, so chocolate is not the answer for sure. I, I think you can have chocolate and have self-love simultaneously, but if you only eat chocolate, and do you think that chocolate is solving all the problems, I think it's not going to work out in the long <laughs> run. Okay. So um, chocolate is moderation, that's what we're saying. Okay, chocolate in moderation. And what you're saying is that you have to do a lot of things. Self-love is an emergent property of- I like of, that word, emergent. Emergent, it emerges out of other things. It's not something you can just grab on right away by itself. It's like happiness, right? Like happiness, it's an emergent thing. Many of these things are emergent actually, many. But Almost. anyway, let's talk about self-love. <laughs> so what are these emergent things that create self-love? The first lie, right? The first thing, the first secret, the first lie, however you want to look at it. The first lie is we think we are bodies and we go about thinking we are bodies and that... Uh, that we should love something about the body, something about the character, something about the label of the body. So, but we are actually spiritual beings having a human experience. And as a spiritual being, you know, think of a spiritual being as you, the real you, and the body as a costume over the real you. And the costume has several labels, right? The costume has a gender or several genders or whatever genders. And then the costume has like a race. The costume has all of these things. And so that is the costume. So when we identify too much with the costume, identify too much with the body that we are in, the label that we have, and think, oh, but I have to love this aspect of myself or I have to love this gender about myself or whatever, right? When we go into all of those things, then we are trying to love something that is very temporary. That's not our true self. And so that is the biggest lie. It doesn't matter how much chocolate you eat. You can eat all of those bars of chocolate, Michael, but if you eat it in the awareness of being a soul and that you're feeding the costume, that you're feeding the body and the you, the soul are doing it, probably you will get sick, but at least you will have self-love. So that's the secret. If you if anyone is interested in eating six bars of chocolate, you can do it in a soul awareness. And at least you'll have a spiritual connection. Yes. But so what you're but what you're saying is is like for example someone someone might think oh self love is to say I like my you know I like my face or I like my nose or you know I I I love my whatever and it's they're pointing at various 
parts of the body, thinking that that's self-love. Because, because I mean, fundamentally, this is the basis of spirituality: is to think the self is not the body; the self is something else that is in the body, the spiritual presence. That yeah, has. and I feel that is the biggest lie. That is absolutely the biggest lie. Is we walking around thinking we are. And it's unconscious. Even people who know their souls, there's a slight a difference, right? They think they have a soul. We are actually souls and have a body. But most people who are spiritual think they are they have a soul and that they have to do something to the soul, right? But we are actually souls. And so whatever is innate to the soul, whatever beautiful qualities that are innate to the soul are already within the soul, like love is within the soul. And so to really have self-love, then when you identify with your true self, with your authentic self, then that love emerges. Mm. But if I think, oh, I want a few spiritual experiences, because love is a spiritual experience. I want a few spiritual experiences. Let me go, you know, keep identifying with the label of the body and let me go look for these spiritual experiences. Then they will always be outside of you that you have to chase after. So if you really want self-love, then love is within you. It's an innate quality within the soul. And to just identify yourself as that spiritual being. I am a soul, not I have a soul. I am a soul. I am love. Mm, that's such a huge shift in consciousness. Really, what we're talking about is self-love, real soul love, love for ourselves, the soul, rather than body love. Because what people normally think of self-love should actually be termed body love love for the body and there's nothing wrong with loving the body in and of itself like we we should look after our body and make sure it's taken care of properly but to think body love is the same as self-love is a big problem you know because i can love the body all i want you know and there's loads of expressions of that now i can love my body by eating chocolate i can love my body by taking a bath with a candle and there's nothing wrong with taking a bath with a candle and having a nice rest but that's not loving ourselves this is a very very deep thing and i think most people don't really know about these things first i mean people listening to the podcast have thought about this because nearly everyone who's interested in spirituality believes i am a spiritual being having a human experience so it's that spiritual being <laughs> in the body who we are loving and then from that real self-love, we can then love our body and love life and love other beings and love nature. But it comes from that, from that source, from that awareness. Otherwise, it's just body, body love. And body right. love's not going to take you into these um, ecstatic states of joy and bliss. <laughs> There is a thing that body love does take you into. You were saying there's nothing wrong with it. But what I've noticed is it's a slippery slope, right? You start becoming very vain. From body love to vanity happens like this. Right. That's the second biggest lie. You know, like all of us, I feel if we keep continuing to love the body, we, I'm not saying we shouldn't. I'm saying we should love it with the awareness that it is my sacred vehicle, not in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And when I don't do that, then there can be a lot of vanity. And then people want to um, feed that vanity and they're not able to feed that vanity. And then they say, oh, I'm not able to feed the vanity, so I don't have self-love. But the feeding of the vanity really happens in this body awareness, body consciousness, where you think you're a body. And before you know it, you're vain about it. You're narcissistic about it, right? It just goes from that to that very quickly. Because like what we feel is the vanity is like there's an excessive identification, an excessive pride 
around the body, around the identification of the body. And then not only do you have it, then you want some other, some other person to come and validate that for you. Right. And so, so many psychological problems come from that, right? And so loving the body is wonderful, but you have to love it with the awareness of being a soul loving the body. That's extremely important distinction because a lot of people love the body and they're not aware they're a soul. And the danger of that, unfortunately, let, let, let's just imagine a car instead of a body. Imagine someone loves their car. Let's say they've got a nice Tesla, right? And they love their Tesla and they look after their Tesla and they make sure it's clean and, you know, they've got white seats and everything. And they like that people notice that they're driving a Tesla and it's all, it all seems fine, right? And then one day someone keys their Tesla or stabs the wheel or the battery runs out and they, or what, or they lose it, they can't have it and they have to get some other car. That's going to cause them all kinds of problems to do, according to how much love they have for their Tesla, but the amount of like attachment and, oh my God, my identity is all wrapped up in this Tesla. If it gets trashed or taken away or broken or, or someone doesn't like it or whatever, then all of that, those good feelings just get totally drained. And I think this is the issue with this body love is that as soon as we feel sick or we get older or we, you know, someone doesn't like us or we, whatever, there's like so many ways that this can go wrong. And then all of our joy is destroyed. Our self-respect is destroyed and we don't feel a, a permanent and more reliable state of, of yeah. happiness. Right, right. And that leads to a lot of psychological problems, actually. A lot of the narcissism, all of that these days is because of that. Mm -hmm. Is because not only you're validating your body, but you want other people to validate it. I mean, this is what's going on on Instagram and social media, like day in, day out, you know. I I know people who who spend such a long time getting their photographs just right younger people normally and um and they they say things like oh if i take a picture of myself in a bikini <laughs> i get much more um much more love right i'm supposed to quote a spiritual quote i've heard this from from the sisters in because a lot of these platforms are sort of that way inclined and if they post a spiritual quote about something and no one cares but if they take a picture of them in a bikini looking looking attractive then everyone's like oh my god she's so hot or whatever but then but they're like i don't really want that validation i'd rather people appreciate it. the deeper part of me but we live in such a world that no one really cares about that and they just want to see the pictures the body. you can't walk something like that back right well, let's I think it's just can. free or I'll just post myself a few bikini photos and then I'll get, you know, I'll get a few likes. And then what? <laughs> then what? It, 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 typically, it goes on a slippery slope and it becomes more and more and more that way. And, and they might end up with, you know, OnlyFans or whatever it is. That, so it's like that's all seems like self-love but it's really body love and then it's body appreciation and then it starts to going in a direction that, that their real self is not being given that regard. The third aspect, the third aspect of self-love, the third aspect of self-love is we have to have a vision of ourself the way God would see us. So when God sees us, this is a secret. When God sees us, He's only seeing the soul. He's not seeing the body. He doesn't care that I'm Indian American, that, you know, I'm in a particular age. It doesn't matter if I'm 90, if I'm 105, I am four, I'm five. It doesn't matter. God will only see the soul. And when God sees the soul, he has the highest vision. And so if you're not able to receive God's vision for me, if I'm not able to receive God's love for me, is because I'm seeing myself as a body, as a label instead of this eternal soul. And so when I see myself as an eternal soul, and when I connect with the supreme soul, then there is a lot of love pouring into the soul, a lot of love pouring into the soul. 
And that love activates our self-love. There's a memory deep inside all of us of love and being loved. There is a deep memory, but I have to be able to be in the right frame of mind to switch that on. So what, what is, why don't we discuss this? What is self-love then? Like what is the feeling of it? What does it mean? Because we've talked about what it isn't and what it is. What, what is it exactly? Um, there is deep regard for the self. There's a affection for the self. There is care for the self. There is friendship for the self. There you are seeing yourself as in your highest, you know, you're seeing yourself as the right, you know, the highest form, as opposed to, let's say, you just give in. And we were talking just now about uh, people posting bikini photos and stuff. Um, eventually, right, your regard for yourself keeps downgrading. You can't, let's say, get on OnlyFans and then think you'll have regard for the self. I'm not talking about the morality of any of this stuff. I'm talking about the dignity of the soul, how you compromise the dignity of the soul. And when you start compromising the dignity of the soul, I really don't care about the morality. The dignity of the soul is what gets compromised. The regard the soul has for the self, that's what gets compromised. And when that gets compromised, it's very hard to walk that back. It's very hard to go back to self-respect and self-love and self-care and that, you know, that feeling that I'm worthy. That is what is love. I feel I'm worthy. I feel someone truly is seeing me, is loving me. Yeah, I think that's what everyone ultimately is looking for is a, a deep connection with themselves and to be seen in a loving way by others who are in that consciousness which is so rare in our world today, isn't it? The next one, let's talk about seeing yourself. All right. So one of the things I've noticed about seeing the self is we don't take time to see ourselves, right? Like really see, see, see ourselves. We're busy focused on the world, right? Either we are busy with uh, going to work and putting food on the table or busy with relationships, busy outside, right? There's a lot of focus. Maybe we have children we have to take care of. So there is a lot of focus outside and you're seeing outside and you don't tend to see yourself, Recently, I was reading that um, the highest suicide rate in India was among um, housewives because at some point they become invisible. A um, woman, right? A woman of a certain generation, um, they become invisible. But you shouldn't become invisible to yourself. It's okay for other people. You know, like when you're young and, you know, you have a great bikini body, you can put post pictures and everyone is looking at you. But there will come a time when you're not young, right? And time moves very fast, actually, that way. And, and then no one's seeing you. So you have to learn to see yourself from beginning. You have to learn to see who you are, not just validate yourself based on what others are seeing you. And so when you start seeing yourself, seeing yourself, really seeing yourself, seeing that you are a worthy soul, that you are a lovable soul, you're an eternal soul, you know, really seeing who you are, your true authentic self. When you start seeing yourself, that is when self-love comes. Because if you don't, right, like, it's not like, oh, I don't see myself and nothing will happen. No, a lot of very foolish things happen when we don't see ourselves, including to the point of suicide, taking your own life, because you become invisible. You know, only at a certain age do people actually see you because it's a very body conscious world. And after that age, you, no one is seeing you. So you have to learn to see yourself. This is very, very, very important. It doesn't matter if you become invisible with your family, your children are not listening to you, your husband is not listening to you, your wife is not listening to you. No one is taking care of you. No one is paying attention. 
you see yourself. That's very, very important, very deep. And it's true, isn't it? When when people are younger and they look a certain way, then they get all this praise and people look at them. And then once that attractiveness of youth passes, there's not that interest, you know, because, you know, there's a difference between them. 18 year old 25 year old or whatever what we're talking about here is a way to avoid mental health problems actually because if our sense of self-worth and self-love is based on our body which is getting older all the time then as it as the days and months and years tick past that is no longer something that can be sustained and things start to sort of fall away and things start to change and if our dignity and self-respect is all based on that, we're going to have a major crisis and major. Um, major crisis. And this happens, you know, happens to men as well, but it, it's true. It does seem to happen more to women because of the world we live in and because of all the advertising and market. I mean, like there's so many images of attractive women, like in all societies, pretty much, especially in the Western world, you know, pictures of the big bikini woman sort of model woman that's like the standard of beauty. That's the idea of what someone should look like. And then no, hardly anyone looks like that to begin with. And then as time goes on, it becomes even less like that. And even the models don't look like that who were in the pictures. And then if that's what love is about and self-love is about, then it's almost like the self is dying, you know, day by day looking in the mirror. I mean, that's really shocking. And no wonder it causes so many issues. You know, one of the things I've noticed about not seeing yourself is you do very foolish things. Like you get into very foolish relationships. If you don't really see yourself right, someone comes and gives you a little, little attention, then you sacrifice and compromise so much to keep that attention going. And all it takes for you to see yourself. Because once you start seeing yourself, once you start really your authentic, true self as a spiritual being, then whatever relationship you get into is not going to be based on this short five minutes of interest. Yeah, and it can be in any any context, getting praise, getting recognition, and then just falling all over it. And, and then you're trapped, you know, in that situation pretty quickly. So lack of self-love is going to cause all kinds of issues and there's all this false you know myths of false love or lies of false love that you can just have a bath and look a certain way eat chocolate do this and that blah 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 and we're going to feel great and it doesn't work you know it really doesn't work and let's just just briefly go over this thing where we we don't we don't want to love the body as in thinking the body's the self because that has that's a very dangerous slippery slope that's guaranteed to cause all sorts of issues and it's also loving to our self that lives in the body to look after the body because if we take care of our body and eat well and all the rest of it then we enjoy having a pain-free life whereas if we don't look after the body then we end up in a lot of pain which we have to suffer through so we're not saying don't look after your physical health and your well-being. We're just saying be aware of who you actually are in the body, which is this beautiful being that has no end and no beginning. The next one is um, we are good people, right? Hmm. Really good people. We are not here to grab, 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 get, get, get. You know, we are not here to hog the attention, you know, take from people, really good people that we are giving people, we are loving people. This is really actually even in terms of just basic behavior, right? It's not even about being a spiritual person, just being like basic behavior as a human being, that you're a good person. Then what happens is if you're a good person, then you tend to really care about yourself. And also what happens is if you're a good person, you do get a lot of blessings. And blessings, that's really important because blessings is like a currency that you get from people. 
that really gives you a boost into self-love. It's very interesting. So the more you help others and, and show up and are coming from a good place, the more people love and appreciate you. And that good energy comes back and allows us to love ourselves on top of the blessings. That's very interesting. This is one of these things that it's an invisible current. Blessings. Yes, yes. We should talk all about blessings later on. But yes, yes. Blessings is a currency. It's a nutrient in the soul that it's amazing. We can talk about it later. But one of the things I was thinking is like genuinely you have to be good, right? Not I, I'm so self-absorbed and then, you know, just for a few minutes I show up and give you some, you know. When the camera's on, when the camera's rolling, everyone's nice and as soon as it's turned off, then, you know, you've seen interviews like that where people, a complete disaster either side of their public appearance, you know. So we try right. to be good, good souls. Really when... good people, really good people. As a person, we have to be very good internally and that really you don't have to be born good right you can cultivate this totally cultivate this is just sit down and decide because it is in our best interest because you know there is a law a spiritual law that is only when you give will you receive if you go into anything thinking let me see what i'm going to get right you don't get much you when you give that's when you receive and so keep that law in our awareness and then just keep cultivating this goodness cultivating being a good person yeah this comes back to to the emergent property of self-love that when i was talking to this person many years ago as a coaching client she wanted to have that self-love and self-respect without basically developing things in herself to be a good person essentially because she was by her own you know, acknowledgement she was wrecking her life which is why she wanted help so we can't just screw everyone over and ruin our own lives for ourselves and somehow get self-love it, it, it doesn't it doesn't work that way uh, we can't just slap it on the top slap a sticker on it somehow but to really have a good look at ourselves and think, how, how can I be more loving? How can I be more caring? How can I give more? How can I genuinely care about other people's well-being? And then it all comes back from there. All right. Next one. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. When we are making these changes, right? When we are making these changes, you have to be okay with some discomfort. When you're really seeing yourself as a spiritual being, when you are trying to be a good person, when you're cultivating, you know, good virtues, all of this, right? It just doesn't come easy. First, Maya, this little, you know, little, this little thing in your head keeps saying, no, 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 it's not going to work. And then our laziness kicks in and everything kicks in. And then it's discomforting because it's, you're not used to being that way. So you have to get used to being a little discomfortable just not so comfortable in the beginning and then everything will smooth over but just be prepared for the discomfort and this applies to everything doesn't it whenever we make a change we're going to have some level of discomfort and distress to some degree to some degree um until we get used to it and people and around you also right michael is not just you it can yeah it can come from various places can't it the um mm -hmm. this is one of the things that i've I've worked with various people over the years and what I've noticed is that some people have this belief system that if it doesn't feel good all the time it must be bad right which is a very superficial way of thinking about things because almost anything in life that leads to results doesn't necessarily feel good all the way through like saving money doesn't necessarily feel good to put it away rather than spending it Doing exercise doesn't necessarily feel good when you're actually building muscles. Doing meditation and dealing with your mind doesn't feel good. Um, all loads of things in life, they have moments of discomfort. And also other people freak out and have meltdowns and all these things. And it doesn't feel good. But it leads to us feeling really, really, really good later on. Like many times I'm sitting in the house and I'm like, 
I need to go for a walk, but I don't feel like it because I'm comfortable in the house doing other things. And, I went, and I'm like, no, Mike, get out of the house. Just get out. Just get up and leave, right? And then I go for a walk and I'm like, yay, I feel so great, right? But there was a, some level of discomfort, even just leaving the house or doing exercise or eating well or anything. So we have to, this applies to anything we do, really. Next one. <laughs> Or we should st we could stop. <laughs> oh, I'm sure there's more magic and wonders yet to be revealed. Okay, this one is a self-assessment. So even before self-love, we need self-assessment. Remember, you were talking about your client and self-sabotaging patterns. And so there has to be a self-assessment. Honestly, you have to look at yourself and see what patterns in your life are ruining your life. And those patterns, and don't be afraid to look at it, right? People are so afraid to look at themselves. Well, I don't know what they think is going to happen. Nothing happens. You will come out of it more beautiful and more lovely and more happy and more joyous and more peaceful and more love for yourself. And so just to look at yourself honestly, because you remember, right? You have to remember something about this uh, goo that is on the soul, right? Not so one, not so good things that are on the soul. That's just actually the surface. Right below that is beauty and nothing but beauty. So don't be afraid of this surface goo. Just go below that and just keep going, keep diving in. Keep going in and keep going past the goo and keep assessing what is this goo that is preventing me from going deep inside myself. This self-sabotaging patterns, this really wrecking my life. What is it that I'm doing? Because once you go past that, then you really go into your true self and then you really see yourself. So how does someone do that? Like uh, someone, I want to assess my life. What should they do practically? Practically is start taking stock right start first start taking stock in the last year when were the times i really felt low when were the times that i really did not love myself or something was off i was depressed or feeling low or whatever right when were those times in the last year then are there any patterns in your life write down all the patterns that are going in your going on in your life are there any patterns in your life that kept reoccurring, right? A reoccurring theme. Like someone at work is constantly bothering you. Of course, it's a dynamic. So that person could be bothering you, but also something in you is getting instigated. So you need to write all of these patterns down. So write these patterns down and then sit very quietly. What I've noticed is in meditation, especially in the morning, when you sit very quietly, right? It's not like you are addressing a situation or addressing a pattern or addressing this or that. But in that quietness, in that just being a soul and just connecting with yourself and connecting with the higher power, when you do that kind of meditation, you are able to really become very quiet and you're able to understand, you're able to see clearly what's happening. And so you have to be able to go beneath to see clearly what's going on inside you. That's right. If if someone just wakes up at three o'clock in the morning, right, and they're not even doing any meditation, if, if you just wake up at two or three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning and just sit there and don't do anything in silence, a lot of stuff will get revealed. Just because all of a sudden, because the atmosphere and the mind, just whatever's going on is going to come up to the surface. Just by getting up early in the morning and sitting in silence. So silence reveals a lot to us. And if we write down what's going on, it'll all come out. Even in one day or two days, three days or a week, so much will, will be revealed to us. One last one. Yeah, great. If you feel you don't love yourself, just stop it. <laughs> just stop it. Why would you think that? You are a beautiful, lovable, peaceful soul. So stop it. Stop feeding your mind stupid things. Stop doing all of that nonsense. Just stop, stop thinking all sorts of 
negative things, just stop it. It is as simple as this, you know, it is as simple as this, just stop it. Life is a decision, isn't it? You just say, that's it. I'm just in your head, stop it, stop it, stop it. Okay, and then come back to the spiritual awareness. So that's it. I'm not sure there were nine or more, but that's it. Ah, so why don't we do a simultaneous breath and in self-love. So we can just take a nice deep breath in. And let it all out. And again. Let everything go. And become aware that you're a shining, beautiful being of light. And remember that you love yourself, the soul that you are, this wonderful presence that's always with you. You are with yourself. You are this being. And we are always with ourselves. So we might as well love ourselves. <laughs> Just breathing in that self-love, that self-appreciation for your real self and sending that love out through your whole being, out all around. Yay. So I have a blessing. And one thing you could do, if you like, um, just a final thing, final thought is um you can get a get a post-it note and <clears throat> right i love myself the soul or i love you to yourself and put it on your mirror but draw a picture of a soul light right so you know who you're talking about and just remind yourself i love myself i like myself the soul and the, the more we have that awareness that we are soul and we love ourselves, the, the more it expands it and expands it. So when you look in the mirror, you remember that you're a spiritual being and you love yourself. Fabulous. Should we do a blessing? Of course. Okay, let's open it. Nope. Acceptance. Hmm. You fully embrace who you are and are at ease with it. Having let go of all pretenses, your true nature shines through. This genuine self-acceptance brings a sense of security and inner peace, gifting others the freedom to be themselves. You read it again. These are very. Deep. Read it again. I don't. I think these are these blessings. They, they, they're very deep and there's a lot in there. So we need it twice. Acceptance. You fully embrace who you are and are at ease with it. Having let go of all pretenses, your true nature shines through. This genuine self-acceptance brings a sense of security and inner peace, gifting others the freedom to be themselves. Wonderful. Thank you, Shireen, for your lovely presence. Thank you, Michael. Always a pleasure being here with you. Yay. So sending everyone lots of love and blessings. Have a beautiful day, beautiful week. And look forward to connecting with you in the next episode. Take care. Shanti.